Hey everyone, we're going to talk more about applications of multiple integrals, so double and triple integrals. In the first part, we talked about mass and first moments, so now we're going to continue and talk about second moments and probability. So a reminder of some formulas we've seen before is in terms of three-dimensional solids or a two-dimensional plate, we learned about the mass um, and how we can find that using a triple integral over our region D, and we're just integrating the density function delta. And then we had our first moments about the different coordinate planes. So we had, for example, the first moment about the yz plane was this triple integral of x times our density. And then we can divide our first moment by our mass to get our uh, center of mass, um, our coordinates x bar, y bar, z bar. Very, very similar for the two-dimensional plate. And so an object's first moments tells us things like the balance or the torque and you can think of the torque experienced about um, different axes in a gravitational field. So now we want to consider a rotating object and what we might be more interested in in this case with a rotating object is how much energy is stored in or generated by that object. So our second moments which are also called moments of inertia so let's start with this um, distance here. So if r of a point x, y, z is representing the distance from the point x, y, z to our in our um, region D to a line L. So if you look at this visual, L is our ax axis of rotation, so we're rotating about L. And then r is just this distance to a point okay, in our region. Then the moment of inertia, or our second moment, of the mass, which is delta m, you can see delta m sub k, about this axis of rotation L is approximately, and this is our notation for it, is our delta i sub k, which is going to be our distance squared, r squared, times our uh, change in our mass, so delta m, or m sub k. Okay, let's put this together. So the moment of inertia about L of the entire object is denoted I sub L. And notice what we have here. It's going to be the summation right here of all of these delta I sub Ks, all these individual moments of inertia for these little individual um, mass elements okay, about uh, in our region. And so if we take the limit, so first of all, the sum of all those, and then the limit as those uh, go to infinity, the amount of those little mass elements goes to infinity, we can rewrite this as a triple integral. So we're going to use the triple integral version for our formulas. So it's the triple integral over our region D of r squared times our density delta dv. So for example, if L happens to be the x-axis, so notice your distance here from uh, where you're rotating. So your axis of rotation in this case is the x-axis. And so we have our uh, object that representing our mass element here. The distance, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So this distance, think of a right triangle, is going to be the square root of y squared plus z squared. But then if we square that, because we end up wanting r squared in our integrand, we just have y squared plus z squared. And so the moment of inertia about the x-axis, written as i sub x, is our triple integral over our region D, where the integrand is now y squared plus z squared times our density delta dv. So here's all the formulas for you. The first half is our three-dimensional solid, and then the bottom half here is the two-dimensional plate. They're very similar in nature for what you're going to do for your setups. And so just kind of notice a couple things. So delta is the density at a particular point. So sometimes it's a constant density. We'll look at an example like that. Um, but sometimes the density changes depending on the point you're at in space. And then the, we just talked about it, the um, second moment or moment of inertia about the x-axis. Your integrand is basically the distance to that x-axis. So y squared plus z squared times your delta. And then very similar setup for your other second moments about your x, uh, z, y axis, z axis, and then about just a line L. So if you just have a different line, it doesn't happen to be your x, y, or z axis, 
then like we said before that distance to your line is represented by R. So let's try this out. So for example we're going to find all three second moments or moments of inertia about our x, y, and z axes for the rectangular solid that has constant density shown here. So notice that there is a center of this solid at the origin. So this is object is centered at the origin and we know no numbers really but we know um, this side length is A, this one right here is B, and you can call this like a height is C. So the second moment about the x-axis, we're going to start with I sub x, our moment of inertia about our x-axis. Notice what we have for our integrand first is y squared plus c squared times our density delta. Now notice the limits of integration, you just get those from your region. And so we had to kind of look at the picture to figure these out. We know that this object is centered at 0, 0, 0. And if we start with along the x-axis, we have this distance as a. So basically, we just cut that in half and say negative a over 2 on this end, all the way up to positive a over 2. And that's how we got these limits of integration. And you can do that on the y-axis and on the z-axis as well. So we're going to use symmetry to make this one a little bit easier to figure out. So simplifying our process, if you sort of pick apart what's going on here with your region, if you look at the yz plane and then you compare that to the xz plane, there's a lot of symmetry going on and you basically can cut your solid here into eight equal parts if you think of it like that. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on going from the origin to we'll say this first positive um, octant. So in the positive x direction, positive y direction, and positive z direction. And we'll just integrate that area, that region, and then we're going to times that by 8. So you don't have to do this, but it's going to make our process just a little um, easier to work with. So now just moving on to the integration. So the first step we're going to integrate at, with respect to x, and notice there was no x in our integrand. And so when we integrated with respect to x, we just got, first of all, I pulled delta out front. We just got y squared plus z squared times x, and then we plugged in our limits of integration. So this became a 4a because we basically said 8 times a over 2. Then integrating the middle integral now, the what was the middle integral? With respect to y, we just use our power rule, integrate with respect to y. We're going to plug in our limits of integration and do a little simplifying. And then we're on to our last, our most outer integral. So now we integrate with respect to z, and then we end up getting this quantity here. Because I know I didn't show it, but just sort of take your time working that out when you plug in your limits. And then if you simplify, Notice what we can call this quantity on top here, A times B times C times density. That's just our mass M. So it's the volume times the density. And so that's our second moment or moment of inertia about our x-axis. And very similar calculations will give us our moments of inertia about the y-axis and about the z-axis. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about probability and we'll look at an example for this. So we can use uh, multiple integrals for probability. And a joint probability density function, f, is a function that satisfies all three of these conditions. So the first condition basically just says that your probabilities won't be negative. The second condition is just saying that the total probability of all the possibilities or all possible outcomes is 1. And then the third part here, and this is saying that the probability, or the probability that a pair of random variables, which is the x and the y, takes on some values within a particular region. We're going to call that region R. So if you know some stuff about probabilities, this might sound familiar, at least parts of this. If not, then just uh, kind of think about if you're calculating probability, you're not going to say that there's a negative probability of something happening. And the most that something could ever happen is 1, 100%. And then uh, this is our notation for finding if x and y exist within a particular region 
which we're calling R. So we're going to work this out real quick. So using the joint probability density function given here, so notice what this is. This is a piecewise function that says that our function is e to the negative x plus y anytime x is positive and y is positive. If x or y, either one happen to be negative, then the function equals 0. So use this density function, probability density function, to find the probability that your random variable x is between 1 and 2 and your random variable y is between 2 and 3. So going back to what we just learned or talked about, this probability that x and y are within this region r is equal to the double integral over r of our probability density function. So let's fill that in. So probability that x is between 1 and 2, y is between 2 and 3, equals our double integral. And so notice our integrand is just our density function. And then our limits of integration are the ranges for our x and our y random variables. And then we just integrate. So I use a little bit of u substitution here. I let my um, exponent be u. And then that's why this negative sign is out front from using the substitution. And then I got the following quantity from integrating the most inner integral here. And then uh, if I just distribute that minus sign and then use u substitution again, so you can pause and use uh, u substitution if you want to work this out, you just end up getting e to the negative 2 minus y minus e to the negative 1 minus y. And then evaluating from 2 to 3, you end up with 0 0.01989. So you can say that there is about a 1.99% or about 2% probability that x is between 1 and 2 and y is between 2 and 3. Okay, so that's just some examples of what you can do with um, double and triple integrals.